All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of the Agent Investor Podcast. I've got a great guest on today, Mike Weatherby. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about his story, but you guys know the purpose of this show. The purpose of this show is to help real estate agents get off the real estate roller coaster, to stop worrying about when your next commission check is going to come in, to stop working with clients you know you shouldn't be working with, and just all of this stuff that you know that you need to invest and we're going to talk about how to do it today. And we've got a really great story for Mike. And um, high level, guys, Mike to me, and I know you're going to laugh at this, Mike, but you're kind of like the definition to me of like the American dream. And you went, when we first met in like 2016, you went from being somebody who was full-time employed, working at a jail, your wife was working full-time, you had two really young kids. Um, you had just kind of starting investing and you take that all the way to kind of where you're at today, where you've got not only your dream home that you live in, you've got a lake house, your wife isn't working anymore, and you have officially quit your full-time W-2 job to become an investor. And I don't know if you've ever kind of looked at it like that, but sometimes like once in a while, I reflect back on even, you know, some of the stuff that I've done, I'm like, wow, like, this is like exactly kind of like what I wanted in the future. So if you're somebody that kind of wants to get to that point where you're not reliant on W-2 income, you're not reliant on your agent income, and you're able to do all the things that Mike has done, this is going to be a great show to listen to. So Mike, first question, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever reflected back? Or are you still kind of still pushing it so hard that you haven't had an opportunity to even think about that? Well, I mean, I thanks for having me on, Tom. I really appreciate it. I mean, I've reflected back. Um, you know, when I started initially, I ended up buying a, a two family in Woburn uh, to get things going. And at that particular time, like I wasn't even sure what I was doing. I just got involved in in the multifamily, um, and you know, I thought it was good to you know have some offsetting income first of all. And but I re reflection wise is I've you know, definitely turned up the, the juice since I've joined your brokerage uh, 2016. But before that, there was like a gap of time where if I just had a little bit more mentor mentorship in that beginning phase, I would have got to my goals even quicker. But I mean, I'm very um, fortunate enough that I've taken the right steps um, and been an active real estate agent and investor to kind of get to where I am today. Um, but it's, it's all starts with taking the right steps and, and connecting with the right people. Well, yeah, it's interesting because I, I talked to you before the, the show started briefly. Like it, some of you guys know my story. It took me six years to do my first deal. And one thing Mike said to me um, that we talked, we yeah. talked really briefly before the show started. Um, Mike had said, like, you know, he could have been so much further along. And I, I said the same thing. But one thing that Mike said to me is like he was willing to put in the time, effort, and energy. And I remember that feeling. Like if if you if anybody, you know, listening remembers the feeling. Or, or still maybe has this feeling where it's like, you're willing to like run through a wall to get the result you want, but you don't even know what you should be doing. And um, going to a, you know, a phrase that your, your partner, your business partner, Jason Goldfarb says, proximity is power. And that's really true. It's like, it's all about like the people that you surround yourself with. So when you bought that first two family, first of all, what year was that? And then were you thinking about it as an investment or were you thinking about it just like, Hey, it'll cost me less to live in this two family. Yeah, pretty much. It was that was the case. I mean, we almost bought a condo. I was with uh, my wife at the time. She was my girlfriend. We wanted to just get out of uh, my mom's house, so we ended up buying the two family. And I uh, just wanted to kind of offset the income. But as doing that, like I started studying into the multifamilies a little bit, and I I wanted to leverage that one on another one, um, which I ended up doing. But when I had bought that one. Um, it was 2010. I had a painting company and, uh, I was, I was painting for these two Italian guys and, um, you know, they were flipping houses. I'm like, wow, these guys are flipping houses. And, you know, honestly, they really weren't the brightest guys in the world. Um, so I, you know, I, I would pick their brain as much as I could. And eventually I was going to sell my two family. And I had this guy, his name's Mike Becker. I'm not sure if you know him. He had came, know yeah. Yeah. He, he had came by. And that's a proximity of knowing people. He came by and said, hey, you have a lot of equity in here. 
why don't you use your equity potentially to buy another property? Or maybe you can do your first flip because you're talking about it. And he introduced me to Enterprise Bank, which I get all my commercial loans from right now. So that like got my wheels spinning even more. Um, and then I kind of put a play into action to to buy my first um, my first flip from there. And now my first flip I bought in 2016, uh, which was on the MLS. And I questioned every single thing there to try to maybe back myself into a corner to get out of the deal. Yep. And um, you know. You know, I had a couple other people that I knew that were a little bit um, advanced that have done the projects and like, you know, I kind of leaned on them a little bit. But I said, you know what, I, you know, I have to do it and I got to take the gamble. And, you know, we did. We were successful. And like one thing just led to the next and you meet more contacts, more contractors. Um, and then having your real estate license, too, is, is huge because then I got my license in 2012, but I didn't do anything really much with it until I decided to invest in the properties um, because mm -hmm. I like the fact that you could save money on commission when selling and buying at that time. Yep. So, so that was kind of like the gateway of my mind opening up to doing the flips. And then I came across uh, a few of your, um, you had some uh, meetups and I, I was blown away that, you know, what level you were on with doing that. So I had no clue about marketing at that point. Um, but, you know, I, I signed up with you guys and, you know, I was, you know, we're at a really good place right now uh, because I kind of joined your brokerage and kind of got involved in that stage of uh, investing in the retail side. Well, one thing, and I don't want to skip too much ahead, but, you know, just for people that are listening, a lot of times, you know, agents will think that by investing in real estate, their sales numbers are going to go down. And the interesting thing, you know, about you specifically, you know, we talked about this at the two day event. I think you were the number one, you know, by volume agent at the point of the event. I, I don't check the numbers every day. You might still be, but you're not even focused on being an agent. And that's like, such a crazy powerful component about investing in real estate is that you could sell, you know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars or more of real estate without kind of even purposely trying and not that you're not working but like when you wake up every day you're not necessarily thinking of yourself as an agent, right? No, not really because we've I've kind of structured most things. The agent stuff kind of comes now um, as I get referrals from like the SOI and most of my mark from our marketing, Jason and I, which we, you said we've patented, uh, I think it's been three years now, but we market to sell to, to people who are looking to sell their property, just like, you know, your model was too. And, you know, we come across, I mean, like you said, nine out of 10 are retail. So we use the same model as, you know, to, to help fuel our marketing spending for that. And we, we, we do get a lot of listings from that too, which is driving my sales numbers up um, significantly. So, I mean, it's, I don't wake up your day, like you said, trying to, you know, promote myself as an agent as much as I should. It just kind of happens that way because of the model about being an agent investor. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like a perfect match. I mean, you know, especially if you want to get financially free down the road, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been really good. That model is working great. So 2010, you had your painting business. 2016, were you working at the jail at that point? And if so, like how long had you been there for? So the reason I, I got the jail job initially because I wanted to buy a house and I was like, okay, well, I need the W, I need to work for somebody so I can get on the books because I was working construction with my father, bartending. And that was just not going to cut it. So I had some initial motivation to do that. Um, and in 2016, yes, I was still working for the jail um, and still trying to multitask doing the flips and stuff and the painting business. So um, I was working a lot. Um, and, so and, and I want to stop you there for a second, because there is one thing that, you know, you know, I preach, Mike, and it's just it's part of everybody's success story is that you worked a lot. There, while while you can definitely do things very smart, at some point, investing is all about sacrificing your today for a future. So I want to stop. 2016, am I right in saying this? You work full-time for the jail. You had a painting business. You were an agent, and you were investing all at the same time. Absolutely. And I was trying to explore with, with your brokerage, too, to try to advance. So that's where I kind of you know, really took off at that point when, um, you know, I understood that, you know, if I built more passive income and 
and learned how to do more flips that I could slowly get a get out of the you know day to day nine to five or, or working in a jail, which I just actually did uh, this last February. So in 2016, now and how old were your kids at that point? Um, so four, eight. Um, how long ago was that? Six uh, years ago. Six six years ago. Yeah, I can I can do deals, but not math. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, my daughter was uh, eight. My son was five. So you know, in the grind right there with the kids, and you know, you I think you have like ten kids, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but you understand, it's it's definitely busy, with, especially with that all those jobs that you're trying to do, plus you get the kids and stuff. So you know, it, it feels like you're Superman, but I mean, you have to be. Yeah, you have to be. And and the thing and 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 that's why, you know, I look at it as like really just like the American dream like story whereas like you had all of those things. I mean, there you know, when you have two young kids, four four income producing things that you're doing, there are no other hours in the day to be doing anything really, right? So and, and I'm assuming that at that point, I mean, there, nobody's American dream is to say, oh, I want to keep doing that. Right. You know, and whatever that was, whether that was 55, 65, 75, 80 hours a week, probably you throw in the kids. It might be 100 hours a week, literally of, of things that you're doing. You're just grinding, grinding, grinding. So how did you kind of like get from that point where you were working a million hours a week to being able to get your wife to stay home with your kids, which is a huge thing that, you know, most, a lot of people want to be able to buy that lake house, to be able to buy, you know, a, a nice, beautiful home that you live in now to be able to quit your full-time job. Those are a lot of things that happen that improve your life in a five to six year window. Like how did that journey kind of go? Well, I, I think it's, it's just taking action and, and, and kind of put, putting it out there, um, what you're trying to do and actually execute it. Um, I even used to make videos of, of myself kind of like talking myself through it. Okay. I'm going to, I want to buy 10 units this year. I want to do three flips. So I used to just try to put it out there of what I wanted to do. So I slowly did that. And I turned the, the two family, I bought a four family from that, use the equity. Um, so then I had six units. So then I had some more income coming in. I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. And then I kind of got kind of laser focus on near UMass Lowell near the university and what kind of really threw me somewhat over the edge even closer was I, I had a lot of equity in the two family after, you know, owning it for four years or so. And, um, you know, 1031 exchange, uh, you know, ended up being a two family into 15 units in Lowell where I'm, I'm sitting in the office of the six unit that I'm in right now. And what that did was create so much passive income coming in where I was just getting that much closer to, you know, exiting from the jail. At that point, the wife wasn't working and I probably could have left the jail a little bit earlier, but I wanted to squeeze in the lake house before I did that. Yeah. So, so that, that whole transaction with the, the major move from selling the two to the, to get the 16 units, um, that was in, uh, I think that was like four years ago. So yeah, that was like 2000, 2017 or 2018 that's when that big deal kind of happened mm -hmm. and that created a lot of passive income and in the meantime i was working i started working with yourself and i was doing some flips in the meantime and i raised a lot of like i would flip a few and then kind of have money for um you know have money for a rental so i'd do a flip flip buy a three family so i was still buying three families uh in between that mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and all, all throughout those years, I mean, I think you were a capping agent pretty much all of those years. Maybe you didn't, I, I don't know. You could have been maybe a year where you didn't, I don't know, but like, you know, making six figures plus as an agent, definitely averaging more than six figures on average. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the things too, even when I started, I used to ask you a lot of questions and uh, you know, and you were always there to answer me pretty much. I didn't know how you answered me. I never really got to see you in person. Sometimes uh, you were the virtual guy, but I mean, you yeah. always have great answers and, you know, no one re reinvents the wheel. Right. I mean, yep. obviously you've learned for someone uh, I'm learning for somebody too. It's just like, it's just a system you need to follow, but it's nice to have someone, you know, on that higher level of thinking that you can go to and, and ask questions about marketing. And then, and then when you implement it, how do I do this? And you are always really good to respond to that. And, you know, I give kudos to you and thank you for yourselves and Jason as well. I'm sure that kind of like kind of led us in the right direction. 
but we took the action to do it. Um, and that's, that's why we were starting. And, and that's the big thing. And you know, that you're not the only person asking me these questions and you know, that in general, most people do not take action on any of this stuff. And it, it's, it's almost mind boggling to me because there are not only do we have a lot of success stories, but there's success stories everywhere. And for the most part, the information, you know, it's 2022 going to be 2023 in a few weeks. The information today is out there. Like when I first started, you know, back in 2005, like the information wasn't as easily accessible as it is today. You know, it was harder to get the information. It, there was no like, hey, you know, 50 million YouTube channels or Facebook groups or people willing to share. It was just harder to even get it. But now the information is all out there, but you do have to kind of take action. Um, with that being said, I know like taking action is like, it's a big buzzword. Like everybody says it, but what do you... What would you say to somebody who knows they need to invest in real estate, knows they need to take action, but hasn't yet? Like, what do you think the thing is that like pushes you over or what advice would you give to them about like getting started? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough because the words just to take the action, but like it, you know, you almost need someone to give you the big push and, and you, you know, having someone to lean on when you come in to just every time you start something new, you're always going to come into some, some problems or some questions or, or, or some, you have some really highs and then lows and you kind of don't, don't know what to do. But I feel like having like a mentor or a coach is probably, probably very, very important because that can kind of guide you through those situations a little bit when you could just start a little bit and then kind of tail off and maybe give up. Yeah. Um, and, and having someone to, to talk to, and give some kind of accountability because if you have no accountability and no direction, then you're, you're, you know, you, you have all these great ideas, but you need, you need structure. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're all kind of like programmed in reality, like from the school age to go to school, listen to what your teacher tells you. Then you get out of school, you know, listen to what your boss tells you. And then you get out into the real world. And if you're on your own, there is no person telling you what to do every single day. So that in and of itself is challenging. Um, so you talked about mentors and mentorship. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, our group a lot, obviously, but you're also in another mastermind group right now. And I always say this to people that they're even like within our company. I'm always like, hey, you know, I think of myself, I'm pretty good mentor, but don't have one mentor, have multiple mentors. So what kind of made you join um, the other mentorship group? And then what do you see the value of being in that other group? I know you and Jay just got back from San Diego. Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely like anything. It's um, when me and Jay started like three years ago, we, we, we had a, a certain marketing that we were doing where it was kind of an all-in-one thing. And it was kind of slowly fading off that we just needed some, some direction with that. We had a, it was mailing, calling, um, we weren't really aware of like tracking our, our leads, KPIs, how many mails we were sending out. We didn't have control over the business. Mm -hmm. So when we had seen Ken Clothier's, um, you know, presentation on that, we, uh, we wanted to take some action just to try to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And from, from doing that, you know, from the beginning, when we started about a year ago, where we had no clue how to keep track of anything to now, I mean, just one year, I mean, Paying for paying for the mastermind and 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 the, we didn't do a one on one coaching with Kent or anything, which I think would probably be even more valuable. But we're we're not quite there yet. Yep. In the value we have from the beginning to where we are now, it's like we actually are running like an actual almost a business. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like we're close. We have you know we got the VAs in progress. We just hired our first acquisition guy. Um, we know we're doing mailing, texting, but we know how to track those numbers too. So um, I think it's like. Because so every quarter, Tom, as you probably know, we have to do a presentation on what we was what we were supposed to implement on our last presentation. So, you know, Q3 or four comes up or whatever, and you're like, oh shit. Um, all right, like let me let me really dig deep and 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 I don't want to go there and say I didn't I didn't implement anything. <laughs> yeah, you, know you, gotta, I mean? you gotta turn in your homework. You now now you're like <laughs> Yeah, it's like it, it seriously is like homework. And it's just like, okay, well, you said at the end of this one, you're gonna look for an acquisition guy and someone to make phone calls for you, like, why didn't you do that? So, you know, I mean, I think the accountability is is huge. Yeah. Hey, everyone, this is Tom Caffarella. I want to quickly interrupt the podcast to number one, 
thank all of my loyal listeners of the Asian Investor Podcast and tell you guys really quickly about an exciting event we have coming up. Uh, it's a two-day event. It's called the Passive Income Real Estate Investor Event um, that you can find out more details at PassiveIncomeEvent.com. We're going to be doing a two-day training session teaching all of the agents and all of the investors at the event on how to achieve financial freedom through real estate. If you're like me and your goal is to not work 80, 100 hours a week grinding, selling real estate, flipping homes, um, definitely check out this event. We're going to teach you how to build a passive income portfolio so that you can retire, so that you can work when you want, how you want, and ultimately achieve financial freedom. So again, go to PassiveIncomeEvent.com for more details. And we look forward to seeing you at the upcoming event. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's why like people, people probably think I'm lying when I say like I've probably spent over $500,000 in coaching over like a 15 year period. And I'll never not. I mean, you know, we're, we're doing a podcast right now, right? I'm in a podcast coaching program because my podcast has done pretty well. But then I look and I say, oh, what are some other people doing? And they're blowing me away. They're blowing me away in downloads and quality and this and that. And it's like, okay, well, I have to make a decision. Do I want to get better or do I want to keep things the same? If I want to get better, then what's the quickest way to do it? Okay, get around other people who are doing it. Get around other people who have 100,000 downloads a month on their podcast and see what they're doing. And not to go too much into this coaching program, but I've been blown away being like, wow, I didn't even know how much, how important editing was, or I didn't know how important like doing a good intro was. And it's just like, you don't even know, you don't even know like how bad you are in a way until you get around other people. And we talked about this too. It's like, no matter how well you're doing, there's somebody like a level or two levels or three levels above you. And it's a matter of like, if you want to get to those levels, you got to yeah. be around those people. A hundred percent too. It's just like, you know, before me and Jason went into the boardroom, which is uh, the, the the mentorship uh, we're in, like, you know, people would ask me like, how do you do it? Or, you know, cause I was uh, to, to other people who are just starting, like, you know, I was doing really good. But when I went there, it was just like a, a total, like, I yeah, was you're like, I, you're yeah. like, I, I'm really bad. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'm really not the best at presentations. I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit better, but you know, it was crazy, like how low I was. So, I mean, yeah. just like, and you, you think you're doing well at it, but if you just have those monsters that not monsters, but like those mentors that can kind of teach you the steps to do it, you're going to get there way faster. And if I, if I got involved a little, a little bit quicker, like say in 2010 or 12, um, I would have been, I would have got there a little faster, but I, you know, that's life, you know, life, life, you learn as you go and we can't, we can't repeat. We can just go forward. Right. No, but 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 with that being said, there is somebody listening to this that should be doing that now. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And that's another thing too. And I, I want to start preaching and coaching people a little bit to to get involved like immediately in, in at the age of twenty three or twenty four, or if you didn't go to college, like that. This is where it's at. Like obviously, you love real estate. I love it, and I have a fire about it too. It's, it's just so much passive income and and so many different people you meet that you can network and, and, and the whole time you're making money too. So it's not like, it's not like you need the money. Like it's so good to do so well in that sense. It's like you actually enjoy it. So right. when you, 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 like, I didn't enjoy working in the jail. <laughs> that was a major time, time suck. And you know, I wasn't around, I wasn't around the right people. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, a, I was like a hero there, you know, because I was taking a couple of risks to like, Oh, you know, but mm -hmm. I understand people, you know, they're nine to five and that's, that's totally fine. But like, I, I needed to release from there. And now, now I can try to operate, you know, a business wise. And, um, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of nerve to do that. But I think if people develop a good exit plan, um, they can, they can get there. You know, a yeah, certain amount of money coming in a month being passive, then you can kind of kick that away. Uh, but you need to have an exit strategy. Absolutely. So you're doing a lot. You're still doing a lot of things, right? You're still you're fixing and flipping. You're buying and holding. You're being an agent. 
if you if if there is an agent on here who's successful or even somebody that's at the beginning stages and they're thinking about investing, what advice would you give to them just in terms of like 80-20 rule? Like what should they be specifically focused on if they're coming out of the gate, just starting to invest, but they're already a successful agent? Well, if they, if they so they already started to invest, Tom, a little no, bit. They, ha- they haven't started to invest, but they're, they're an agent. Like what would you say the 80-20 rule? Like if you were coaching somebody, that they should be focused on when it comes to investing? I think they should be focused on getting into that first multifamily. Um, yeah. An owner-occupied multifamily would probably be the best avenue to, to get into. Um, but, you know, I think, I think, you know, because when you first start, you know, you, you probably don't have many funds to potentially source any deals wise. So I think in, initially, you know, you need to, you need to figure out a way, whether it's, you know, driving the dollars or anything like that to try to get your first deal. Um, but there's, there's networking groups that, you know, you can, you can present certain deals and you can, you can partner with people. Like you had said, Tom, you know, some new agents can come across a deal and be so nervous about it, right. That they just need someone to try to pity piggyback for the first few times. Um, I, I think it, it's definitely nice to have that kind of company, to uh, be there for you kind of every step of the way, especially in the beginning. Yeah. And then that's one of the benefits. Like if if people who are listening, having jumped on an inner circle call to learn more about how we help agents, um, you know, get off the real estate roller coaster, you can set up a call at any point with me at www.agentinvestorinnercircle.com. Again, that's www.agentinvestorinnercircle.com. But one of the benefits that we have is the ability to partner with somebody. And a lot of times people do kind of come across deals here and there, but they're afraid to do them. They're afraid to do a fix and flip because they maybe they don't have the money or they're not willing to risk the money or they don't have the construction, but we'll actually partner with people who are in the inner circle um, if somebody does come across a deal. But I do agree. Like I, I think to me, when I really look at everything high level, I kind of look at 80, 20, like what's priority. And I always say like to anybody who asks me, I'm like, it kind of goes in this order. Like your rentals are the most important thing. That's going to give you the most leverage. It's going to build your net worth. Second are fix and flips. And fix and flips are going to give you big chunks of income. Um, But it's kind of like being an agent on steroids. That's the way I look at flipping. It's like you're making a lot more per deal um, than, than an agent, but you're also, you know, doing a little bit more then your agent income. And it's in kind of that order, in my opinion, in terms, if you're looking at it from just a purely, you know, financial perspective, that's the order. I think people need to kind of think about it. And yeah, I agree. You broke that down. You broke that down pretty well. Um, That's my problem. Like I'm all over the place, but you're, you're very systematic at breaking that down. And I think that's exactly how you have to kind of plan it. But you, but you know what, Mike, I'm not truthfully it. This is a matter of, me trying, I, I talked, you know, earlier before we even jumped on about mistakes I've made, right? I, I told you, you know, my big mistake from 2017 to 19. It sounds systematic because I've made so many mistakes. And it's like, once you, you keep making the mistake and now you get more clarity, more clarity, more clarity on what's important. And that just comes, I think, with, you know, experience. And I think that like that, we're talking about levels, right? And oh, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, Somebody below you is going to hear you and say the same thing about you. And somebody that's two levels higher than me is going to say, I don't have it figured out yet. And it's just like you you keep fine tuning. And that's what I think investing is. It's like I, I had a discussion with my partner, Bill, the other day, because sometimes we talk about mistakes we made. And I go, we have to look at things in like three year windows. And because like every six months, you could maybe have a problem, like you can maybe go down a little bit. But are you improving three years? So like, if you look at yourself, Mike, you go, okay, in 2010, you bought your first multi. Is your life better in 13? Okay, then at 13, is your life better at 16? Then is it better in 19? Is it better in 22? And that's where, you know, I just look at like what you've done and say, it's like the American dream. It's like, you know, you know, you, your, your wife watches the kids, you have your own business, like you're making good money, you have passive income, you have your lake house, you have your regular house. So with that being said, what, what are your next three year? Like, what do you, what are you hoping to do in the next like three years? Cause you've done, 
you kind of done all the stuff that's on paper. Like, like, yeah. I think you know, the feeling like, you know, you, you always, you get to a certain point, you look back and you have to look back and be appreciative of what you've done. So sometimes mm-hmm. I need to stop and realize, wow. Okay. Like all these things that I like projected or whatever are happening. You need a roadmap for it. But like you said, like, there's always something else. You know what I mean? You, you master, you master the, the fix and flips and, and that business, get that going. But maybe you want to do some mentorships down the road. Maybe you want to shoot for a thousand units. You know what I mean? There's certain other goals that, you know, I, I want to try to achieve. And I, I think there's, there's no, there's, it's limitless. It's, yeah. there is a cap, there is a cap to something, like you said, quality of life. But like, I guess at the end of the day, like in Ken's program too, it's like you eventually want to be the CEO of your business um, and have kind of a director of it too. So I think that's like the end goal for me. Um, but yep. I always want to be involved in, in a daily activity that is going to keep me really fresh on everything. Um, and I'm learning every day, just like you, there's different deals that I haven't done yet. Like, um, you know, condo conversions, I really haven't done much too. Um, there's other things that I want to do in the business that I know are going to come up. So, I mean, only going to kind of grow, live and learn from your mistakes a little bit, but like the whole thing starts with action. So you have to, you have to do something. You have to, it, that's a, the hardest part is getting started. The hardest I, I, part is getting your foot in the door and then, and then failing it a little bit and then feeling the success of, um, of what you did. Um, and then one thing I want to say too, is I, when we talked about this before, it was, a, it's a, it was just from one wholesale deal that me and Jason did. We, we, we bought a single family rental in Lynn. We got a great deal on it from mailing marketing. We, we double closed on it. This is a little high level for some people who probably don't understand, but we can go offline and talk about it. We double closed on the property. We 1031 because it was a rental property into a nine unit in Salem. And then from Salem, we just bought a 16 unit from Tyler um, in Haverhill. And, and we have projections potentially to get 30 units from that 16. And that's from one, that's from one, mailing campaign that we had run obviously you have to spend a lot of money to get a deal like that but i mean it's just like one deal could change your life but you if you don't do anything about it to start then you know there's only so much someone could help you if you're not taking the actions yeah and i look at it like it's like you know thinking about the monopoly game like you just you have a greenhouse you get another greenhouse thing all of a sudden it's a red hotel and that story you just gave was like a very it happened really quick. Like that, it usually doesn't happen that fast where you're turning like, you know, a few greenhouses in like one year into a red hotel, but it did happen for you that way. But it also wouldn't have happened to you. Like if you were in the beginning stages, which is why you have to get started because you were in a position at that point in your life to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. You may not have been like three or four years ago. And so it just, it's all kind of like building and it all starts with knowledge. Um, there's a saying in you know real estate, the more you learn, the more you earn. And for those of you who are agents, like the best way to me to get educated for free is to join our, our free Facebook group. It is completely free. We do training every single week there. You can join the Facebook group by going to www.agentinvestor.com. And I do at least one free training a week. I also post a lot of other valuable content, but Again, the whole mission is to help agents achieve financial freedom so you don't have to be grinding every single day. And really just, again, every few years, you're making a big improvement in your life. And that's where I see the biggest issue with most real estate agents that are just real estate agents is like, yes, you might make good money, but you have the same life every single year. Like you're not really actually building like blocks. You're not building a house. You're not building brick by brick. And that's where, like, I just see the investing specifically, it is structured in a way, and this has nothing to do with us, me or Mike or anybody that's an investor. It's just structured so that you win easier. You end up getting to the finish line. You achieve more by investing than just selling all the time. Not to mention, of course, you know, you don't have to run out on a, somebody texts you on a Friday night. Hey, I want to see a house on Saturday morning. You're an investor, you don't have to do that kind of stuff. And not to be lazy, not that you don't want to work on a weekend, but at some point you want to get to a point, you know, Mike's got young kids. I have four young kids. It's like, you know, 
the meaning of life is not to work, you know, seven days a week. And that's what investing can do for you. So again, yeah. um, if you again, guys, join at www.agentinvestor.com. Um, so yeah, Mike, I, I want to thank you for coming on. Like I said, you you really have a great story. We talked about this briefly beforehand. Like you have literally the agent investor story, like it's there. And um, you know, I'm excited to see where you where you are in three years. Obviously, we're going to continue to be building our our empires together. And you know, you have a good partner and and Jason, and also a great partner in your wife as well. And um, you know, it's just exciting to see, and it's it's fun, right? Like you had mentioned a couple of minutes ago, like there's no part of your day that's like really, you know, a grind anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't call it not a grind because it kind of is, but no part of my days that's not, doesn't interest me Yeah, because an interest you, it doesn't really become a grind just because it becomes something that you do and that you like doing. But like, yeah. I mean, you have to, like you said, I mean, I think, I think the agent investor is like, it's a no brainer. Like what, why, why would you be an agent and not an investor too? I mean, when you're an agent, you know your market, you study a market, you can kind of pick some deals and then you have a group to kind of reflect on to see if those are good deals. So I think that's a, a great way to get started, especially in the beginning. Even, even if you have experience, if you've been doing being an agent for 20 years and you're like, all that time, I, I passed up so many deals, right? So so even on that side, like even if you're a rock star agent, let, let's get some passive income coming in. I mean, that's the end game. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next week with another uh, great guest on Agent Investor. And uh, guys, you know, I want to encourage you, just like Mike said, if above and beyond anything else, get around other people that are doing this. Find a mentor. It doesn't have to be us, but it it, it needs to be somebody. And again, to leave, you know, with with Mike's words, really throughout the whole thing, you've got to start by taking action. So, uh, guys, I encourage you to take action on this and. Uh, looking forward to seeing, you know, what everything brings in 2023. So thanks again, Mike. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks again for listening to the Agent Investor Podcast. And especially thank you for sharing the show with other agents and reviewing the show on iTunes. Every time you share the show and leave a review, you are potentially changing someone's life. To get free weekly education, strategies, and to connect with other agent investors across the country, join our free Facebook group at agentinvestor.com. Again, that's agentinvestor.com.